I'm about to introduce Linda Logan, who's done our anesthesia for many years. And before I introduce Linda, let me tell you what I do to help her. Uh, in addition to what uh, Barb Ryder has done in, in the instruction of the patient to put the patient at ease. It's kind of the way we do our injections. Now the old system is to sort of do the four quadrant injection. Uh, we do them very superficially going clear around the meatus. Uh, we use a different injection than most people. We use nine parts of 2% xylocaine to one part of one to a thousand adrenaline and we mix, the, we mix them together. This gives us a great more vasoconstriction, so our cases have much less bleeding than most. How did we come upon this? Because we did a number of patients where we used various amounts of xylocaine uh, with adrenaline until we saw which gave us the most hemostasis with the least cardiac problems. So this is the, where we landed on nine parts to one, so that cuts down the bleeding. So between less bleeding and the, the good, the better uh, local anesthetic, we're able to do our cases under local anesthesia. So Linda, I'm gonna turn it over to you and you take it from here. Well, Dr. Lippi, as we discussed earlier, preparation is the key to having a patient cooperate to have this done with local anesthesia. So the first thing I do in the morning is interview the patient, sit with them, explain everything to them, reinforce what Barbara has already told them in the office, explain the necessity for being done under local so that we can test their hearing during the procedure. Then I also explain to them what they should expect during the procedure itself. I reassure them that they won't feel anything, that they'll be sound asleep for the local injection in their ear, that they won't feel that but that later they will wake up during the procedure while Dr. Lippi is working, that the lights will be off in the room, the music will be playing, they'll hear all that. I'll be sitting beside them reassuring them that everything is fine and that it, indeed they are to be awake at that point. Once we've explained everything to the patient, we start an IV, usually give them 50 milligrams of Dramamine orally to the adult patients. This has proven to be very successful with us when it comes to dizziness and post-op nausea and vomiting. I do give them um, some more Versed in the operating room if they need it. Most of the patients don't. The two milligrams that they've had preoperatively is sufficient. I give them a little bit of fentanyl, probably 25 micrograms and maybe 30 or 40 milligrams of Diprovan prior to Dr. Libby numbing the arm for harvesting the vein graft. Once he has done that and we're ready to inject the ear, I give approximately 50 micrograms of fentanyl, maybe another 70 or 80 milligrams of Diprovan. His local anesthesia is so sufficient that after that, I don't usually have to give anything else at all. It's just kind of sailing from then on. The patients do wake up. I remind them where they are. By the end of the procedure, they're awake enough from the minimal sedation that they've had that they can do the audiometry then. So basically, that's all there is to the, the local anesthesia. Again, it's the preparation and the quality of the local anesthesia itself that is the key. Linda, occasionally we have the patient, especially a big patient or a heavy patient, uh, that's snoring uh, or, or taking great big breaths. So what, what do you do in that case? Well, at that point, we stop the sedation let them start to wake up. By this point, you have numbed the ear already. They're gonna be comfortable when they wake up anymore. anyway. We just don't give them any more sedation after that. What do you mean we have to wait then, th those few minutes until they, they're more awake or would you give them another medication to wake them up? Occasionally, we'll have a problem with the patient perhaps moving and not knowing that the patient is yeah. moving. Um, just a, a maybe a, a bit of delirium. So what I would do at that point is give some romazicon to reverse the versed that they have had. That takes just a few minutes to work. After that, you've got a nice calm patient who's laying still for you again. One of the great things about this, this system, I think, is that it's a rare, rare patient 
because uh, I ask almost all of them, do they remember the, the, the operation? It's a rare patient that remembers anything. And yet we've talked to them through the procedure, we've tested them before, we've tested them afterwards, and they have no bad memories. Well, you're getting two amnestic drugs the Diprovan that they get intraoperatively, the Versed that they're getting preoperatively, both cause amnesia, so that's the key there. Well, it works out great, because I will it'll be just the rare patient that has any complaints of anything that happened during anesthesia or during the whole procedure. So I, I love the way we do the procedure. Thank you.